so we talked about solving equations using that addition and subtraction principle. So what do you think we're going to look at next? Multiplication and eventually division. But the first thing we're going to talk about is multiplication. So again, if I start out with something that I'm assuming is true, a is equal to b, whatever a and b are, they have to be the same thing. If I multiply both sides by the same exact quantity, is it still equivalent? Is it still true? Yeah. If I started off with 2 is equal to 2 and multiplied both sides by 3, 6 is still equal to 6. Looks different, but it's still equivalent. Still holds true. So we can add and subtract the same thing from both sides. We can multiply the same thing on both sides. And eventually we'll talk about division. So let's look at that first example. I want to solve the equation 5x is equal to 80. So to get x alone, we're only talking about multiplication again, what do we need to multiply both sides by? So to get x alone, we need to multiply by what? So we talked about those reciprocals earlier in chapter 1. So when I multiply a number by its reciprocal, I get out 1. So what is the reciprocal of 5? By the reciprocal of 5, which is 1 fifth. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by 1 fifth, I'm getting rid of that coefficient 5 out on the front. So let's see what it looks like. 1 fifth, I'm going to indicate my multiplication with parentheses, times 5x is equal to 80 times 1 fifth. So, same thing divided by the same thing, if you want to multiply it out, if you need to see it in this form, is going to give us what over here? Same thing divided by the same thing gives us 1. So those cancel out, and we're just left with x. And in reality, what are we talking about over here? 80 times 1 fifth, if we actually do the multiplication, straight across the top, straight across the bottom, we're looking at 80 divided by 5, which gives us 16. And again, we can always plug it back in and check, make sure. If I multiply 16 times 5, does it give me 80? And it does. So, that multiplication principle also tells us what? If we divide on both sides of the equation by the same number, it's still equivalent. This is because what? When I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, it's the same thing as division. So dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay. So, in this first case, naturally you want to say, if you've had algebra before, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. We're saying the same exact thing when I multiply by the reciprocal. But sometimes it's easier to multiply by the reciprocal. Sometimes it's easier just to straight divide. And we'll talk about that later. So, that little example on the bottom, A over C is equal to B over C. Its equivalent, it's already given to you, is like splitting up this division into multiplication. I can write it as A times 1 over C. I can split it up. Or B times 1 over C. So, hopefully you can see dividing by C is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So, whichever form is going to be most convenient is what we're going to roll with. So, in an expression like 23x, the number 23 is called the coefficient. Whenever we have a constant out on the front of a variable, the constant is called the coefficient. And that is a very important term to know. You'll see that a lot in math. Okay. So, let's take that same example. And instead of multiplying by the reciprocal, since we know multiplication works and division works, let's use division. See if we get the same thing. So 5x equal to 80. 
instead of multiplying by the reciprocal of 5, what else could we have done? Starting right off, divide both sides by 5. Because 5 divided by 5, again, gives me 1. Those are going to cancel out. And I'm left with 16. If we want to write the 1, that's fine. But to simplify, we want to write it in its simplest form. So we got the same thing. In that case, I think it's easier just to divide by 5. Makes more sense. Okay, so let's do some more. Some more practice. Negative 3x is equal to 63. So, the coefficient is being attached to x with multiplication, so we want to divide both sides by negative 3. We also want to move the negative. We want x on its own. So what are we left with? Same thing divided by the same thing. It's going to be gone. What is 63 divided by negative 3? I get minus 21. And we can always plug it back in and check. Make sure that it's actually true. So, two for you to try. Take a stab at it. All right, so what happened with that first example? Y is attached to a negative 6, so we need to divide both sides by negative 6. So what did you get for Y? Should have gotten out minus 16. Again, we can always plug it back in and check. And the original equation doesn't make it true. For the second one, what did you have to do? Divide both sides by 8. So what was x in that case? When we do this division, we get out 24. Sweet. So we haven't dealt with just a negative 1 out on the front of x in an equation before. So there's two different ways that we can actually solve that. We can either use multiplication or division, like we've been seeing before. I can multiply by the reciprocal or just divide. So in this first case, I am going to take this guy. I want x on its own, and I'm going to break it up. So I can rewrite negative x. The coefficient on that negative is really 1. So I can break it up into its multiplication, if I want to see it like that. So since it's attached by multiplication, one of my options is just to divide by that number, trying to get rid of it. So x is going to be equivalent to what over here? Minus 9. So it works with that division. Or what's my other option? I can multiply both sides by a negative 1. Since negative times negative gives me what? A positive over here. So negative 1 times negative 1 times x will give us positive x. And what will we have on the right-hand side? Minus 9. Did we get the same? We did regardless of if we multiplied by a negative or divided by a negative. So when you have that case, whichever one you're most comfortable with, run with it. So try. Give that one a shot, and I'm asking you to multiply on both sides, not use division. So what do you get out? If we multiply negative 1 on both sides, so negative times a negative will give me a positive 1 times x. It just gives me x. Negative times a negative will give me positive. And again, does it make sense? If I plug that back into the original, x is equal to 12. So, is negative 12 for x equal to negative 12? Yeah. So again, multiplying or dividing by a negative to solve those guys. Whichever one you're most comfortable with. The last part of this section deals with trying to decide when do I want to divide, when do I want to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to do some examples in practice and see which one works best. So generally, we want to divide on both sides if the coefficient, the number on the front of the variable, is in decimal notation or if it is an integer. So a decimal number or a whole number that isn't zero. We can never divide by zero. So one thing we have to remember. So that's when we use division. Generally, we multiply by the reciprocal when the coefficient, the number on the front, is a fraction. Because these are going to be the easiest cases for each. So let's do some examples, and you'll see what we're talking about. 
Okay, so we want to solve fraction and fraction on both expressions. So, since it's in fraction form, instead of dividing by a fraction, then dealing with the multiplication, we just want to start off and multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient, which is going to be what over here? So I'm going to multiply negative 5 fourths times its reciprocal, which is what? Minus 4 fifths. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Don't forget. So again, multiplying by the reciprocal. So what do we get out on the right-hand side? Same thing, divided by the same thing. So negative 4 divided by negative 4 is going to be gone. 5 divided by 5 is going to be gone. Reciprocals, we multiply them, we always get out 1. So we're left with x. And what about over here? So I have negative 4 times 2 up top. 5 times 7 down below. So x is equal to negative 8 over 35. And again, we can report it in any order that we want. Since it's true that negative 8 over 35 is equal to x, x is equal to negative 8 over 35. Generally, we like to read things left to right, so it's more natural to write it in that way. And again, we can always plug it back in and check. So, fractions. What did we do? Multiplied by the reciprocal. So the next example has a decimal. 1.234y equals 5, 6, 8. So, do I want to multiply by 1 over 1.234? Not really. Since it's a decimal, we'll just divide both sides by the coefficient out on the front. And I won't make you do that division yet. But again, same thing divided by the same thing is going to be gone. We're just going to be left with y. And on the right, it is equivalent to 460.29. And if you're not convinced, plug it back in and check. In the original equation, if you multiply those out, is it still true? So, two for you to try. Give them a shot and we'll come together and solve them. So what had to happen with this first example? We have a fraction for a coefficient, so we want to multiply both sides by its reciprocal, so flipping it upside down. Seven halves, whatever I do to one side, have to do to the other. Because again, multiplying by the reciprocal, what happens? Same thing divided by the same thing, all cancels out, we're left with y. And we can multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So I'm looking at 7, 6. But again, do we usually read right to left? No, we can switch the order around. And still true, still equivalent. Again, plug it back in and check if you're not convinced that it's actually true. For the second one, what happened? We had a decimal, so division is generally the easiest route to go. Instead of thinking in terms of multiplying by a fraction that involves decimals, ugh. So again, same thing, divide by the same thing. We're left with 1 times y. And what is this equivalent to? If you actually do the division, we're talking about negative 3.572. And again, we like to generally read left to right, so we can switch that order around. So fractions, multiply by the reciprocal any kind of decimal, do division. So as we look at the last two examples, they require a little bit more work, a little bit more thinking. Looking at that first example, I want x on its own, and right now I have a fraction. So I know I should lean towards multiplying by the reciprocal, but what number am I actually looking at to see its reciprocal? So, I want x on its own, and I want it to be positive. So, how can I move this negative without changing the equation at all? Whenever I have a fraction and I have a negative, I can either give it to the top, like it is right now, or what else? I can give it to the bottom. So, I can attach that negative onto 7, and these two are still equivalent. But now, when I multiply by the reciprocal, of 1 over negative 7, I'm taking care of that negative at the exact same time. 
instead of first taking care of seven, then taking care of the negative. So we can kind of do it at once. So what do I want to multiply by in that case? Negative seven, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Because again, same thing, divided by the same thing, I'm left with x, and it's positive, which is nice. And if we do that multiplication, what are we looking at? Negative 140. So let's just say that we didn't take care of the negative first. So what am I going to multiply by in that case? I'm going to multiply both sides by 7. And I'm looking at negative x is equal to 140. Then I have to either multiply or divide both sides by a negative to get that same answer. So in reality, whichever one you're most comfortable with, if you want to take it in small chunks, piece by piece, that's fine. If you want to recognize, hey, I can assign that negative in a different way, make it look a little bit different, but still equivalent, go that route. So take the try. Solve for y. In that case, the 2, the negative is already assigned to the 2. So when I multiply by the reciprocal, my y is already going to be positive, which is nice. So what do we need to multiply by reciprocal of 1 over negative 2 is negative 2. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So I'm looking at y, since the same thing divided by the same thing is 1. And what do I have on the left? Negative 17 times negative 2. So negative times negative will give me a positive, and I'm looking at 34. But again, generally, we read it left to right, so we can rewrite it like that.